Hey friends, Josh here from HR University, and in this video I'll explain what job rotation is, how it can be employed, and what possible benefits can come from using it. One of the smartest things a manager can do is to get to know their employees, their strengths, and weaknesses. Moreover, a quality leader does their best at helping employees learn and grow into becoming better workers and smarter planners, and job rotation as a practice directly answers all of these challenges. It provides a creative way to broaden an employee's abilities while also helping managers establish better control over the entirety of the organization and its structural way of functioning. Now, before I go on, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and that way you can get regular notifications of all the HR content from HR University. Now, let's go ahead and jump in. So job rotation, by definition, is the name of a systematic management technique that sees an employer rotate their employees through multiple assignments or job roles at regular intervals. In other words, a manager regularly shifts the employee's job position, and that way the worker can experience many other job positions in a given company. And there are several reasons this technique is employed, ranging between increased productivity, increased motivation, succession planning, and productivity evaluation. So how does job rotation accomplish this? There are several clear objectives achieved with job rotation. Before we explore them, let's first point out the two essential types of job rotation. You have task rotation and position rotation. On one hand, task rotation is usually seen in companies where workers either do constant manual labor or are under prolonged mental strain. Task rotation serves to ensure that each employee gets to have some well-deserved physical or mental rest from a particular task. For example, a physical worker who uses the same muscle group daily to perform a given task is given the opportunity to amend their posture in order to avoid long-term health problems or physical disimbalance. And position rotation, on the other hand, sees the employee change departments, types of assignments, or designations in order to acquire new skills for the future. This leads us back to the job rotation objectives. The first and possibly most obvious objective is employee learning. By being exposed to all verticals of the company, employees are given the opportunity to get acquainted with different kinds of positions and the skills necessary to excel in them. And not just that, but they get to know the company in its entirety and grow more attached to it. This way, they both become more valuable workers by themselves and more useful workers for the entire company. What's more, workers will become more adaptable and learn to transfer skills from one sector to another. They would also be well equipped to substitute any of their coworkers if need be. And the second objective is the reduction of employee boredom. So keeping a high level of employee motivation. Simple manual jobs or repetitive jobs of any kind can truly become boring after a while and a worker's enthusiasm will normally start to drop. Job rotation ensures that all employees get to try something new every once in a while. They'll learn new skills, adapt to them, and perfect them. And once they become comfortable in their job, you have a new rotation and a new role to adapt to. This way, employees will never get bored and their motivation will never suffer. An extra bonus here to all this is that after a while of such rotation, which would see employees be exposed to multiple positions, they'll usually have gathered enough skills to even ask for a promotion. The third objective is employer learning. It encompasses two sub-objectives getting to learn all of your employees' strengths and weaknesses, and getting to train them in various fields while strengthening their attachment to your company. To put it simply, employers will get to see all of their employees in a wide variety of job positions and environments. And they'll see who excels at what. In physically demanding jobs, for instance, this is very clear. Different bodily builds and constructions will be more suitable for different physical tasks. So after a period of regular job rotation, employers will be able to give permanent and fixed positions to employees they know are the absolute best at their roles. In comparison, employers will be able to train their workers in various different fields, thus making sure that whatever happens to the company later on, so let's say an unexpected leave, a crisis, a necessary reduction of workers, that they can still always have a steady number of loyal employees to rely on. And these employees will know the company inside and out and do their best to see it thrive and succeed. And this leads us to the fourth objective, a direct consequence of what we just described, succession planning. Succession planning is a process through which employers decide 
who will get a promotion and replace a senior level worker upon retirement. In the long run, job rotation ensures that all workers are capable enough to assume senior positions and function as competent overseers of different kinds of tasks. By finding the one who stands out in a given role, employers will have a clear substitute ready whenever an elderly employee decides to retire or resign for whatever other reason. In this way, the future of the company always remains at the back of the bosses and managers' minds while going hand in hand with the development of every individual employee. So versatility, productivity, and higher perceived skills are the all around objectives of job rotation from the point of view of both employers and employees. But has job rotation proven to be beneficial in practice? Well, you'd be happy to learn that there are several benefits of job rotation for all parties involved, many of which are actually the direct result of planned objectives. For example, one advantage is that workers are definitely more motivated and interested and can also boost their skills more and over time. They're better suited to tackle various issues as well and show a high level of flexibility. And they're less likely to be fatigued and get to significantly develop. Another advantage is that job rotation increases the morale of your workers while helping the company get a good grip of their capabilities. And by smartly assigning and reassigning positions, the company will reduce production time as much as possible while achieving faster and better results. Overall turnover for future rotations will also be improved with more and more workers being able to tutor newcomers in different kinds of positions. Finally, a third advantage is that public sector companies can also benefit from job rotation by exchanging employees with other public companies and agencies. This way, increased networking collaboration will significantly influence the status of the company while also strengthening its bonds with potential collaborators. Yet, we shouldn't forget that job rotation also has some drawbacks, as does everything in life, for that matter. Firstly, not all companies and job positions are suited for this practice. So, if you think about it, specialists who have intentionally been hired for a given position have no reason to be rotated. Furthermore, while boredom is a real danger for many employees, stability and security are not. Many employees are happy with their jobs and they may actually find job rotation very disrupting as a result. And considering how quality and proficiency at certain jobs are built over time, shuffling the employees will see the experienced, fast, and good workers eliminated while a newcomer with no experience and expertise takes their place. In the short run, this leads to slower results and a loss of motivation for those who are just getting comfortable with their task schedule. And on that note, there's also yet another drawback, costliness. Training workers from scratch, introducing them to new positions, and asking new things from them requires professional guidance. And this guidance, usually in the form of professional group training, costs a company money. Job rotation is very useful in the long run, but at the beginning of its establishment, it can seem expensive while providing surprisingly slow results. Rookie mistakes and adaptability issues are real hurdles that all companies need to consider before establishing job rotation in the workplace. And there we have it. I went ahead and covered all the basics of job rotation here, as well as its main advantages and disadvantages. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And there we have it. That's all from HR University and I'll go ahead and see you in some of our following videos. Until then, take care. Cheers.